Hey everyone, welcome back to Zen at the Tabernacle. Uh, glad you guys are joining me tonight. Um, we, we got some fun stuff to talk about tonight. Um, you know, let's just get right to it though. Um, you know, if you guys caught Reba's message this past Sunday, it was a part two of uh, The Way of the Warrior. And uh, there's a lot of good things, you know, said in that message. But when I hear that word warrior, you know, it, it just triggers something in my mind. Uh, I should say more so in my spirit. Um, but I, I think, you know, I go right to, you know, Ephesians and that armor of God. And guess what? That's what I want to talk about tonight. That's what I want to dive into. So let's get to it, guys. So, you know, Reba mentioned, you know, Ephesians 6, uh, chapter 10. Or my fault. I got that all mixed up. Ephesians uh, chapter 6, verse 10. You know, and she said in there, hey, finally, be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. And that's like the start of the whole segment of the armor of God. So I want to read a little bit further along tonight and uh, just, you know, join me with me while I read here. If you guys want to, you know, open your Bibles. Hey, like I said, Ephesians chapter 6, uh, we're going to start in verse 10 and go through verse 17. So it says, finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Amen. That right there is a biblical description of the full armor of God. And uh, But what's it all mean? You know, why, why is it so significant? Why is it so important? Um, you know, what is, what, where's the anointing, uh, if you will, in this armor? Let's get into that. Because really, it's about the whole book of Ephesians. And I recommend that book. You know, if you're ever doing a Bible study, go there. Do a Bible study in Ephesians. Because it is just so powerful. And, uh, it, you know, it wraps up. In Ephesians 6 and we just pretty much read the conclusion so the rest of it you know is amazing but I want to talk a little deeper about it you know to understand the armor of God we kind of have to go take a step back and look at the uh, you know the before you know the Ephesians chapters you know 1 through 5 what are they telling us that leads up to that you know that finally you know word in um, verse 10 you know finally what you know, so, you know, in Ephesians chapter 1 through 3, it pretty much, uh, it sums up in there to say, you know, it lets us know, us, the believer, it lets us know uh, what Christ has done for us. And uh, there's it's just packed full of blessings and everything that Christ has done for us. And this is leading up to something. Because in Ephesians chapter 4 and 5, you know, it's saying, hey, Here's how we walk, you know, walk it out every day as a Christian, you know, walk it out like Christ, you know, in Christ likeness, um, you know, because we're grateful, you know, we're happy, we're, we're, we're experiencing all these blessings that, that God has given us through Jesus, and now we're living it, you know, and then it rounds about into chapter six, you know, and talks about, okay, here's where we stand firm, we're protecting we're protecting what God has given us. Um, so I want to go ahead and, you know, say, hey, there's pretty much six six elements to the armor of God. And uh, they're all right there in Scripture that we read through. Um, but I'm going to break them down a little bit here for you. You know, so we have, you know, the belt of truth. You know, the belt of truth, it kind of keeps everything together. You know, you think about a belt. Boom, you wear that belt and it's holding your pants up. It's holding maybe, you know, holding your tuck shirt in. It's just holding everything together. You know, symbolically, it's kind of saying like, hey, we need to live in the truth. You know, put your full trust 
in God's truth, the word. You know, we know the word to be the truth. We need to put our trust in that. So when we put that belt on, you know, that's what it's kind of representing right there. You know, this, the next piece that we talked about, you know, that they talk about in the Bible is the breastplate of righteousness. You know, it's saying, hey, you know, we're trusting what God has done for us, you know, through Jesus. You know, what has he done for us? We're trusting that. And that's why we wear that, you know, that, that breastplate of righteousness, it covers, you know, our, our core. You know, this is like in, in war, man, you get hit with, a, you know, a bullet or an arrow, you know, anywhere around here that your heart's in there, you know, that, that's a fatal shot if they get you. So you want to, you know, you hold that breastplate of righteousness close to you. You know, you trust that, you know, you trust that what God has done for you through Christ. Uh, this one, you know, the next one is one of my favorites, uh, you know, the shoes, the readiness of the gospel of peace. Um, that's just a cool one, you know, because it's like, hey, you're always on, you're always just prepared. You're ready to go whenever, you know. Um, I even wrote down here in my notes, you know, whenever, wherever. Um, if God's calling you to say, hey, you know, go get, go, go preach to these people over there in that parking lot. You know, you have those shoes on, you have that full armor of God, you have those shoes, you are ready to go and preach that word. You know, and this is how that warrior mentality, you know, that's what I'm thinking of. You know, the next one we talked about is the uh, the shield of faith. And the faith is, faith is so important. I mean, it's, it's what holds you up, you know, during the rough times. You know, it's, it's what holds you, I guess, really... The rough times, you know, the good times, you, you got to have faith, you know. Um, we know in, you know, in Hebrews, uh, you know, chapter 11, verse 6, it says, you know, it kind of roundabouts my own words. It says, you know, it's possible, it's impossible to please God without faith. And I think that's a huge connection of our relationship between, you know, God and ourselves. You know, we have to put that faith in Him. And, you know, when we put that shield up, it's so significant because it's saying that, hey, you know, we're choosing to trust God more than anything. That's faith right there. You know, and you can take any kind of situation or any kind of problem you have going on and put your faith 100, you know, all in God. That's that shield of faith right there. You know, the helmet of salvation is another part of this armor. And it's just, you know, it's just symbolically saying that, hey, you know, God is the one who saves and delivers, you know, and, and I think it's, it's even more symbolic, you know, that it's a helmet, you know, because it protects our minds and it brings us hope, you know, no matter what happens to us, you know, we, we have that helmet of salvation on, it, nothing's getting in here, you know, this is the mind, you know, we talked about it on Sunday about, you know, Romans 12 too, you know, about how, you know, re reforming the mind, you know, to get your mind right, you know, you have that helmet of salvation and it's filled with God, your mind is going to be right, but make sure you put it on. You know, the last one, one of my favorites, and I think one of the most powerful uh, pieces of the armor of God is just the sword of the spirit. <laughs> We've talked about this a lot and a lot of people who have, you know, you know that the, the sword is a double-edged sword. And it can cut through the lie, almost so. I mean, like just so easy. And it, how do we, you know, how do we use it? Well, we engage with the word. You know, you constantly find yourself, you know, in a Bible study or reading scripture, you know, daily. Um, you know, taking a class like ICIT. You know, watching a sermon online. You know, listening, you know, to to a sermon on tape. Just engage in the word. And this is going to, you know, fill you up here. You, you really, it, it's the ammunition, you know, ammunition for the weapon. And the weapon being the sword of the spirit. You know, but um, and we know that, you know, the word is the truth. And the truth will set you free. Amen. The last part, and you know, it talks about this later on in uh, Ephesians 6, um, really 6.18. You know, I'll read it here. It says, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. 
So it's not sometimes it's not really considered like, you know, a part of the armor of God. But in my opinion, we'll say, and I'll throw this in here and, you know, don't hold it against me. But in my opinion, I almost think like when you pray in the spirit on all occasions, it's like the anointing that comes from having that full armor of God on there. But hey, let's dive deeper on this. Why, like I asked earlier, why is it so important? What is the significance, you know, about the armor of God? You know, all these pieces we just talked about, they're just pieces. But what gives them the anointing? You know, what are we doing with that armor? I can just walk around with this armor on and it might not have any effect unless I know why. And that's what I want to jump back to. In Ephesians chapter one, if you guys will read it, um, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna read it for you, but you know, go back and read it. It's Ephesians chapter one, verses three through fourteen, and it kind of talks about the twelve spiritual blessings, you know. And this is part of that whole category of uh, you know, it's letting us know what God has done for us through Christ, you know. And so I'm gonna go through the list here. I'm not gonna read it, but I'm gonna go through the list. Of the blessings, you know, we're blessed with every spiritual blessing. You know, we're chosen to be holy and without blame. We're predestined. You know, we're adopted as sons. We're accepted in in the beloved. You know, um, we're redeemed through His blood, according to the riches of His grace. We're forgiven for our sins. You know, we're given wisdom and understanding of His will. We're given an inheritance. You know, to bring praise and glory to God. And we're sealed with the Holy Spirit and we're guaranteed of inheritance until our redemption is fulfilled. That's a lot of stuff that God has given us. So now if you go jump back to Ephesians 6 and the armor of God, you're going to sit back and realize that, hey, I'm wearing this armor to protect, to stand firm on what God has given us or has given me through Christ. Like I said, this is the, the 12 spiritual blessings are so, they're just so, like they're, they're just so good. I mean, so yeah, God equips us with this, with this amazing set of armor. But unless we understand why we're wearing the armor, the armor won't have any effect. So, like I said, go back and realize that, hey, in Ephesians 1, it tells us why we're wearing the armor. Because all that stuff that God has blessed us with through Christ. And like I said, in Ephesians chapter 4 and 5, we get to go out there and we get to, we get to live Christ-like. You know, and then, but we get to, in, in chapter 6, just stand firm. Stand firm with that armor of God on a daily Wake up and put every piece of that armor on. Because you know what I'm saying, when, when I think warrior, I don't think as, you know, um, like in a physical sense, I don't, I don't think like, like a ninja warrior, you know. <laughs> I'm not going out and fighting someone else to gain territory. Or I'm not going out on the, you know, offense. Um, but more so, what the Bible says, I'm standing firm. I'm standing firm in Christ to protect what Christ has given me. And that is why I suit up every day with the armor of God. So guys, I hope you enjoy this video. You know what? And I really hope you jump back into Ephesians. You know, if you don't have time for a Bible study in Ephesians, at least go back and read chapter one and read chapter six about the, you know, the 12 spiritual blessings and the full armor of God. And just know, know the reasons of why you're wearing it and what you're protecting and how worthy you are to receive all this from God. And then it just shows how worthy it is to protect it on a daily. So remember, guys, you know, we become more of a warrior by allowing God to do more work in us. So stand firm in him because with that full armor, we have the strength and the stability and encouragement to just receive everything that God has for us. And I, I just can't say any more on it because I, I just get so excited about diving deep into God's word because more is just revealed uh, every time that we jump in. So, hey, guys, wake up tomorrow morning, say a prayer, 
you know, put on that full armor. And like I said, understand why you're wearing that armor. Go out, love on one another. That's how we fight the battle. Because the battle is won. Bring them in. Amen. Love you guys.